The Yukon has more wild sheep than any other part of Canada. Mountain sheep of the Yukon are thinhorn sheep. They differ from bighorns, which are usually larger and have thicker horns. Thin horns range in the Yukon from its southern border to the British mountains near the Arctic coast. 80% of these animals are white doll sheep. They are abundant in the southwest Yukon, thinly scattered in central regions, and present in some areas in the north. Darker stone sheep are found in central and southeast regions, and where doll and stone sheep overlap, a unique color form known as fanon or saddleback sheep occurs. In the old days, as now, thin horned sheep were prized for their delicious meat. Native people also made blankets and clothing from the sheep hide and fashioned utensils from the horns. Prospectors and hunters took a heavy toll on Yukon's sheep populations during the Klondike Gold Rush and the building of the Alaska Highway. But the thin horns have since recovered, presently numbering about 22,000 in the Yukon. Today, thin horn sheep are one of the most prized trophy animals in North America. Managing these herds is the responsibility of the Yukon government's Department of Renewable Resources in partnership with regional resource councils and First Nations. Jean Carey is a Yukon sheep biologist. Sheep are, are really traditional animals. The environment where they live in is relatively unchanging. The alpine is the alpine because of the climatic conditions. It's not like the forest where fire can come through and change everything overnight. So they really rely on um, key habitats and unchanging habitats. The lambing cliffs are rocky cliffs that are always going to be there. Winter ranges where the snow was blown free. They, they can't deal with, with deep snow. Mineral licks and the migration corridors between these, these areas, amongst these areas, so that they always go to the same places. They're very predictable because they're environment is really predictable. Most lambs are born about the third week of May. The ewes head off to lambing cliffs, have their lambs by themselves, and it can be pretty tough up in the mountains in the, in the middle of May. It's not unheard of to have a, um, a snowstorm or something. So in addition to predators like eagles, grizzly bears, coyotes, they also have to worry about about the weather. Um, lamb, ewes only have one lamb, typically, and almost half of them don't survive their first year. The springtime when the ewes go off to have their lambs also really tough on the yearlings because the, um, the lambing cliffs don't have a lot of vegetation and the ewes are going there to, for the protection that the cliffs offer. And the, the young ones, last year's lambs, the yearlings, are torn between the following mum like they always have and staying down low where it's starting to get nice green grass. So that's where the, the mother-young bond is usually broken. Once the ewes have their lambs, after a few days of, of isolation, they'll join up to large nursery bands. And nursery bands are the ewes, yearlings, um, and two-year-olds of both males and females. And they'll remain separate from the ram groups until the fall rut. And after, after breeding happens, that's when the young rams head off and join up with the ram bands, leaving the nursery groups behind. Mating behavior of doll sheep includes a spectacular ritual that establishes male dominance among adult rams. Violent clashes believed to establish breeding rights within the band. I don't think it's all that it seems to be. It's definitely a, a fight for dominance. 
that the rams clash heads, bat their, bash their horns, um, playing King of the Castle. And the general theory has been that it's only the, the biggest, most dominant ram that does all the breeding, but uh, studies have shown that there's a lot more breeding going on that the big guy doesn't know about. Uh, rams are usually full curl, uh, mature by the time they're eight. And we've, we've learned this from the full curl photos that we've taken of all the hunter submissions. We were able to age back and we know that 85 to 90% are full curl by the time they're eight, but they're likely involved in the rut but slightly before that, off to the side. Yukon sheep hunters are restricted to taking only mature full curl rams. To be legal, rams must be either eight years of age or they must be full curl. This is verified by renewable resources officials who inspect all harvested sheep. Growth rings on the sheep's horns allow technician Philip Merchant to age each sheep precisely. These lines uh, at this point in the lab are fairly easy to see if you know what to look for. In the field they're very difficult to see. Uh, generally it's a, it's a dangerous thing to do to shoot a sheep strictly based on the age. If it's not for full curl, the best thing to do is look for another sheep. The sheep is obviously under, uh, under full curl. Therefore, the only, uh, the only hope, essentially, the hunter has is that it's eight years old. Um, in this case, it's not eight years old, it's, it's seven years old. Um, quite often, uh, there's quite a range. Uh, you can get six-year-old sheep that are well over full curl. You can get four- and five-year-old sheep that are over full curl. Those are legal sheep. Conversely, you can get eight or ten or twelve-year-old sheep uh, that are under uh, full curl but are uh, old enough. Uh, some of the few cases where a sheep comes in that is um, under full curl but is old enough, uh, they're very old sheep and it's not a question of them not growing enough to be full curl, but they've started to break off horn and they look very much they look very much like, like this sheep, where you have what appears to be a very heavy set of horns and they're, they're broomed or broken off uh, at between the second and the third year. Um, even a sheep like this, it's uh, dangerous to assume that just because it looks heavy and, and broken off, that it must be eight years old. This sheep is probably only eight years old. So it would be a legal sheep, but uh, it could easily be a seven-year-old sheep broken off or broomed off like that, uh, and, and that mistake could lead to some unpleasant consequences. While this demonstration is useful in understanding aging techniques used by biologists, hunters must rely on careful observation to ensure their quarry is legal. High on a mountaintop overlooking a jagged cliff, sheep hunting becomes a test of patience and skill. A trophy sheep can usually be identified easily, even from a distance. See how the horns sweep up well past the bridge of the nose? Now that's a classic trophy ram, as it obviously meets and surpasses the full curl rule. But the majority of sheep you're likely to see on a hunt won't be full curl trophy sheep. Determining that your chosen ram is legal usually presents a variety of challenges. Challenges you can meet by patiently stalking to within viewing range and carefully considering all the implications of making your initial shot. Here's a typical field situation. Check out the horns on these sheep as they feed.
Remember, the camera in this situation is quite close to these sheep, as these springtime rams are not as wary as sheep that are regularly subjected to hunting pressure. Are they legal? Can you be certain they meet the full curl rule? By freeze-framing the video at just the right instant, you can see for sure. But you're going to have to work for field opportunities like these. Your stock must be thoughtful and steadfast. Waiting periods of three to five hours may be appropriate as you allow the target sheep or a group of rams to feed just out of sight from your position. Groups of ewes and lambs must also be weighted out. It's a waiting game that typically pays off for the truly patient hunter. Sheep frequently appear in groups, like this nursery group of ewes and lambs. Occasionally, rams may be mixed in with nursery groups. And on rare occasion, you may encounter a large group of mature rams all together. These situations also require careful observation. It's not often you'll get this close to a group like this, but as they slowly feed, watch how individual rams keep changing position within the group. Which would you pick as your target? Whether you select the first ram or the fifth one, you must concentrate on that sheep and track its movement. Otherwise, the wrong sheep could be shot. This is especially important if you're spotting for the shooter, as in the excitement of the moment, a mistake is very possible. Ongoing communication between the shooter and the spotter is essential to ensure you are both focused on the same sheep. Describe its every movement. Which way is it facing? Is it standing or down? Is it chewing its cud? Where is it in relation to the other sheep? This type of communication is the only way to ensure you are both looking at the same sheep. If the sheep see you before the shot, they often bunch up. Even after your shot, they'll typically bunch together, then scatter in all directions. And you must still be certain that the sheep you're looking at is the same legal ram you first selected. It'll require your complete concentration. Now, after your shot, a wounded sheep may not give any immediate indication of being hit. Here again, communication between the shooter and the spotter is critical. You must both ensure you're still focused on the same sheep to be sure any subsequent shots are at the same ram. And you must be sure that ram is standing or maybe running clear of any other sheep. Finally, stay hidden as the sheep generally do not know what is happening or where the danger is. Sheep hunting is an extremely rigorous experience that requires serious commitment by the hunter. The demands of the hunt may force you to endure cold, wet weather conditions while fighting hunger, thirst, fatigue, and soreness all at the same time. This video should help prospective sheep hunters prepare for those conditions and ensure you're adequately informed to correctly identify full curl or trophy class wild sheep. It's the patient hunter who stalks their sheep slowly and deliberately that has the best success. Yukon wild sheep are a world-class attraction for both trophy hunters and wildlife viewers. Show respect for these magnificent animals by avoiding any activity that may unnecessarily disturb them. And remember the three rules. 
respect wildlife, take only what you need, and use all that you take.